just being constantly aware of something that I've started to practice is that whenever I'm in dialogue with someone, they are the universe talking to me. And it makes me very present. And even if they're sharing about something that's happening in their life, it is a message for me. Welcome to The Expanded Podcast with your host, Lacey Phillips. As a leading manifestation advisor with a process that's, well, radically different from the old New Age model, mine is rooted in psychology, neuroscience, and my energetic gifts. I created this podcast to help you expand your subconscious limiting beliefs about the potential of deserving the manifestations you are calling in. Therefore, you're tuning into this podcast series to show your subconscious that anything you desire is possible. And by pressing play, you've already started the process of manifesting it. If you enjoy this episode, please leave us our review comment, and share it with your fellow manifester that's struggling or could really benefit from the information that you're about to learn. Welcome back this week. So what's new? Has anybody else been drinking a ton of hibiscus lately? I've been drinking so, I've been craving so much hibiscus and I didn't realize how incredibly potent and beautifying it is. So I started to just drink it in Topanga. I would pop into Topanga Living Cafe every day during the move. And so I would grab one of their iced ones, you know, and then I started to look into the benefits because I saw that my skin was glowing a lot more from it, I was assuming because it was the only thing new in my regime. And so looking up all of the benefits, I mean, it's absolutely bananas how incredibly medicinal this little herbal flower is. Therefore, I ordered it and I've been adding it to my herbal infusion every day. Uh, And if you're not familiar, if maybe you're new to this, I don't drink water during the day. I drink herbal infusions, which I've been doing for years. I learned about this years ago when I was in herbalism school and I was actually suffering from psoriasis on my legs at the time. Really bad. I mean, like I couldn't wear shorts because there was just red itchy blotches everywhere. And I went away to Brittany, France for the summer, a month with my ex's family, his mom's Parisian. So we would spend a lot of time in France and I noticed it went away. We were staying at this old farmhouse. And then when I went to stay for an elongated amount of time at my family's ranch in Cathay's Valley, California, it also went away. And the only two commonality aside from them being like you know, vastly far away from the pollution of Los Angeles. They're both on well water. And the one thing people need to know about well water is it's incredibly mineral rich because it's coming up through the earth and it's been filtering through all of the minerals and rocks of the earth and this like beautiful purified spring water. And so therefore I began to make herbal infusions based on this YouTube video of Susan Weed, who's one of my favorite herbalists that exists. She's up in Woodstock, New York. She's a real OG. And I watched this YouTube video and she's like, this sounds outlandish, but for two weeks, go ahead and drink only herbal infusions. Um, That was kind of the pitch. And she said, if you don't believe me for two weeks, take two identical plants in your house feed them the water you've been drinking and feed the other like just a nettle herbal infusion every single day and watch what happens. And I did it and the plant took off. And from that point on, I've only been drinking herbal infusions instead of water every day because the water lacks so many minerals in Los Angeles, even though I have like the best filtration system you can have in the house. That was like a huge thing I had to invest in for my health. And I immediately contacted my friend Shiva Rose and was like, Shiva, what's the go-to, you know, system that everybody uses? Because I know Gwyneth Paltrow uses one. And at the time when I knew Amanda Chantel Bacon, well, she had a great one. And so she turned me on to her guy who put a whole system through the house. And so the drinking water is the best I can possibly have in LA. I mean, it's like 
quadruple gazillion whatever uh, filtered and then alkalined and all that. And even that was too mineral depleted for me. So my mineral infusions as of late consist of nettle, oat tops, milky oat tops, and hibiscus. And so the way that I make that is I take one of those huge gallon ball jars or half gallon ball jars And I put about eight scoops of all of them together blended, like eight tablespoons. So I'll take kind of like two and a half of one, two and a half of another two. And I just even it out till it feels like eight tablespoons. And I just mix them and I pour hot boiling water on top, cap it, and I let it sit for four hours. And that's what I drink all day. And then my friend, who's so beautiful, she's Iranian, she's in New York, her name's Nagar, she saw me drinking it and sent me a DM and she's like, make sure to squeeze half a lemon in it because it boosts so much collagen in your body, it promotes a lot more, so I've been doing that. And hibiscus is so refreshing and beautifying for the person who might have been like, mm, hibiscus, iced tea, whatever. That was me forever. So... The fa- everyone's going to DM and they're going to be like, where do you like to get <laughs> your herbs? And I personally just source them from Mountain Rose Herbs. And this came up today because I was reordering a pack of it. Don't make money from it. Nothing. I just been loving hibiscus lately. And aside from that, the only really new and exciting thing to talk about is the house calendar system is finally going to launch to that wait list. So the Forest Retreat House, the house I created up in Yosemite close to my hometown, which is like the most wellnessy luxury biohacked place. You can go check it out at theforestretreathouse.com or at the forest retreat house on Instagram. And we've had a wait list for a very long time now, and it's really built up and we're finally, finally releasing the calendar on the 15th. Everybody on that wait list will receive it first. So if you're not on the wait list now, you have time to run to either of those places, the site, or you can go to Instagram and you can click on booking and sign up for the wait list. So you can be one of the very first as it will book out very quickly. And the calendar is only going to be available from September through the end of December. So if you're not there and you're interested And the way that it's modeled is it's a place to head with your unblocked village, to go with a group of friends, to go as couples together. I always used to think that if I were to ever have a bachelorette party, that I would do something like this, like go get cooking classes or go to a meditation thing with some of my friends. So it's very much designed to literally go forest bathe by Yosemite beautiful rivers and beautiful. There's so much to do. It's really designed for you guys to get off the grid, get naked and get back into your whole worthy, authentic self. Some of the perks are that all of the rooms have blackout shades, all incandescent lighting. There's a biomat, a travel size biomat in every room. There's a communal beamer mat. There's an infrared sauna, an outdoor spa that has two twin claw foot tubs side by side. So you can have moon baths underneath the full moon or underneath the stars and the cedars because out there there's no light pollution. So you can fully see the stars. It has a beautiful, totally filled communal kitchen. So there's things like Vitamix, the Omega Juicer, I mean, an air fryer, an Instapot, it has a wolf stove. I mean, it's totally loaded. And on top of that, it has sun potion herbs. I mean, we carry like Celtic salt. It's pretty much complete. (laughs) So if you haven't checked out the tour video, either on Instagram or the site, make sure to go check out what it looks like and what's included because it's pretty magical. Even every single Linen in the house is either organic Cuyuchi, Mateo, or parachute market. And every single bedroom has a parachute market or two robes so that you can walk out to the infrared with the outdoor showers or go to the claw foot. Or there's even a bench down by the creek that I meditate on. And there's also walking sticks because right outside of the house, there are about seven. It's in a national forest. So there's about seven historic national foresty hikes that you can literally walk out and go on. There's also two Linus bikes below that are ready to be ridden and enjoyed around the neighborhood. I will say a huge perk of going in October, the bikes have baskets. So you can go about, it's a neighbor, but neighbors, you know, 
this property is an acre. So it's a neighbor who has a hundred year old apple orchard and every Sunday is a you pick day. So you can go and she gives you those like big apple-y picking sticks and some buckets and you go out and pick your apples and then you can come back to the house. And last year I made pies and galettes and we juiced them. I mean, we did a lot because we had a lot of apples. I ended up sharing a lot with my mom and brother who didn't make it out to the you pick. Uh, So that's a really, really fun thing and a perk. Yeah. So if this sounds interesting, make sure to go sign up. That will go live on the 15th. And I'm really excited. We're also playing around with the idea of holding some events there. So stay tuned for that too, because we may start to hold some either speaking or workshoppy events or events I throw with my friends. It's kind of all in the mix. I'm letting it channel right now. And Yeah, the only other updates too is I've been on a lot of other people's podcasts lately. So you'll really want to listen to those. There's some really good ones. The first being Melissa Ambrosi, who I had the honor of meeting when she was out in LA last. We'll put that link below. That just went live a week and a half ago. Also, Ashley Wood, I'm returning on her podcast. There will be a link below for that. And then one that's really exciting that I think we actually may re-air is one that's called What's Your Jersey? It's my friend Jacqueline Marfuji's podcast. And I think this one's really special because we used to uh, work at the Laugh Factory together as waitresses (laughs) and 10 years ago or now longer, but we get really into what that was like, like being poor and hustling and not being magnetic yet. And so it's a really raw, real view into that. So that's a good one. You'll want to go check that out. And the link will be low on that as well. And then we have some really great podcasts coming up. Look forward and look out for it. Next week is going to be the one year anniversary podcast episode. Lila and I are going to go through and answer personal questions that you submitted to us, including our entire astrology charts. I know for me, I like to look up people's that are my expanders charts and I never have their birth time. So in this, I go through And I give you my entire chart, so all the planets, all of the houses, and what's in what house. And Lila does the same, and we go into just quite a few great answers in that. So that'll be next week. And then the following week after that is Shaman Durek, who's returning again. So stay tuned for that. And let's get into today's episode. Welcome back to the Expanded Podcast. So we have returning guest Mel Nahas is back. And if you have not listened to her first episode, which we get really deeply into her process of manifesting a larger investment in her company and taking Conscious City Guide to the next level, you will certainly want to listen to that before this because it's a follow-up process episode of how she manifested it. Welcome. Thank you. It's so nice to be back. We're so excited. And it's also really exciting to have you back because you're my neighbor in Topanga now. I know. Yay. I feel Welcome like... Welcome to the mountains. I'm so, <laughs> so happy to be here. And I think that you were probably one of my expanders for getting out here. Oh, beautiful. I love that. Just knowing that it's possible to be happy here and find the right place. Yeah. I think I even remember touching base with you early on. And you did. Yeah. So... I'm yeah, excited. you can work and live here. It's nowhere near as far as what people think it is. I know. It's, yeah, it's great. You're going to love it. <laughs> I'm already feeling it. I'm so excited. <laughs> well, let's get, tell us what you manifested, Mel. I'm so excited for you. So I love it because I feel like now that anything I say on this podcast is going to happen because... <laughs> So I'm just going to blurt out everything on my list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should actually have to share your house list with us. <laughs> but in the last podcast, I think you asked me what would be an ideal partner or an ideal expander business wise. And I said Live Nation. Mm-hmm. And I don't even think we shared. Okay, so I'm going to update the crew who maybe didn't get a chance to listen, but You were in a major magic dark and you weren't sure that it was a full-blown magic dark. You were like in a low space, ready to kind of give up. And I think it was actually a year ago that we had this podcast episode and you, I had seen you on your birthday 
last year's birthday and you had just been going to do your first rounds for investors and you had gone to, but I didn't think, I don't think you named what your ideal company would have been to have as an investor, which was Live Nations. Okay. You take it from there. Yeah. So after my birthday last year, I think I mentioned on the last podcast that I didn't sit with the investment fundraising process at all. And I very quickly dipped out of that and just refocused on building business and generating our own business revenue to attract really good partners. And yeah, so I definitely was in the magic dark the the last time that we spoke. I was, I hadn't renewed my visa. So I hadn't gone back to Australia to renew my visa yet. So I was kind of at that point where I thought, do I even renew my visa? I think- you were at a low point. Yeah. I remember <laughs> you were like bitter and low. And it, what's so funny is you're in the same process as a house now, which we'll get to later. But I remember you and I was like, I don't think it's as far away as you think. <laughs> I'm like, I'm moving home back to Australia. <laughs> anyway, everything in your process ended up unfolding down to the T. Wow. So I, you know, had business expanders, of course. What did they look like for the person who's like, it's really hard for me to find expanders? Were you finding them on social media? Did you hear about them through press? Were they in person? All three. Okay. So I had an expander that I've never met before and just read a lot of articles about him. One person that I followed on social media and then another was a friend Mm -hmm. who has a successful business. But anyway, so I did end up going back to Australia to renew my visa. I came back and we put on Mercado Sagrado because I was committed to that. And right after Mercado Sagrado, I got a call from a friend who owns a similar sized but it is a music festival. And he was literally, and it's the music festival's called Form, and my friend's name is Zach. And he was literally calling me for our taco guy's number. <laughs> He's like, oh, I heard that you had great tacos at Mercado. Do you mind if I get his number? And I was like, no, of course, abundance for all. Here's yes. his number. And something just within me was like, just ask Zach who's doing his ticketing at the Mm. moment. And I was like, oh, by the way, who's ticketing form at the moment? And he said, Mel, we just did a great new ticketing partnership deal with Universe. And Universe is a ticketing company that had been on my radar. They're similar to the technology partner that we had before, but they had more capabilities that our community now needed. And so this expander, Zach, came in to show me a different path of the next evolution of my company's growth. And tech path, like next tech evolution. Yeah, because we, our system had really outgrown our community. We needed um, things like international currencies and payment plans. We're at that point with our system we use. We're like, we're, we're looking for our universe version. Right. Yeah. So I asked him, so what is this technology like? And he praised it. And I thought, oh, wow, maybe I should at least look at a few different ticketing partners. And so that expander opened up this world to me that I could have a different sort of ticketing partnership. Mm -hmm. And by the end of last year, I had three offers on the table from three, two different ticketing Mm -hmm. companies and one of our old existing partner who wanted to keep us, of course. Yes. So by the end of last year, we had these three deals on the table to move our business over to a new ticketing platform, which also in a business deal comes with, you know, a little bit of money to help you move the technology over and obviously you have to integrate the tech and build a whole new site on board the whole thing yeah so first of all I loved the fact that universe was called universe yeah I mean come on (laughs) conscious city guy definitely needed to work with universe (laughs) but as I researched it I didn't realize this but universe was actually owned by live nation oh So I loved that because in my head, Live Nation was such an expander as a company 
because they produce and promote experiences as well as ticket them. And that's what we're doing, Mm -hmm. but for the conscious culture and conscious lifestyle. So we ended up doing the new ticketing deal with the universe in March this year. So it's all really new. Was it a flow? It just all flowed so seamlessly. No. Okay. I I always want to know. I'm like, let's see about this. No. So we had the three offers. I didn't know. I didn't really know which one I was going to take. And at the end of last year, I pretty much thought we were staying with our old partner because they had a you know, tech roadmap to bring on other pieces of technology that we needed. It's kind of better the devil you know. (laughs) Under the, I just want to dip into the energetics a little. Was that out of loyalty? Was it a high self-worth or a low self-worth thought process of like weighing out these tests? It wasn't loyalty. Okay. Sorry. Uh, (laughs) That's business. I'm impressed. And I I said that to the CEO of that company. I said, it, I'm going to make the decision that's best for my business. And he, he totally understood. So it definitely wasn't out of loyalty. Um, at that point, it was definitely um, tech. Mm. So the new year came and Spirit Weaver's Gathering was going on sale. The day Spirit Weaver's Gathering went on sale, our site crashed. <gasps> the entire... That was Mercury Retrograde where, or no? No, I don't Shit. think so. It, I don't think so. I can't remember. But it was, what I do remember was the site crashing and it was a Saturday and I just was losing it. And I love Maya, the founder of Spirit Weavers, because she is so patient and, but it was a nightmare. And we worked through it. The site got up back online and, and all the women were able to buy their tickets, but obviously you know, it was very stressful for all parties, for spirit weavers, for us, and for women trying to buy tickets to this event that literally sells out in 10 minutes. I mean, it's basically like Coachella of the women's gatherings. Yes. And uh, (laughs) so at that point, I was like, no, I'm done. I need new technology. This. So you had been sitting, you hadn't made a decision yet. No. Uh, and what was the energetic beneath that? Was it like putting your I head thought, under the sand or what is that? I thought we could get a better deal. From the old people? From anyone. Any of them. Ah. And what was the energetic beneath that? Uh, that I don't know if it was that we deserved more. I wasn't at that point, mm. but I was at the point where I know that technology exists out there Mm -hmm. that is better and we someone wants to work with us so I don't know what is that that's great okay excellent okay so it was that but it took the website crash for me to think oh my gosh it's time it's time and at this point I had already been introduced to uh, Michael Rapino CEO of Live Nation but we hadn't had um, a big rapport yet and I went into my tea room after the site crashed because I was just, and once everything was back online, I was, you know, it was Saturday afternoon and I was so exhausted and just at the point of like, where is this going? And I got this full on download that said, you have to tell Mr. Rapino what's going on and that the deal that you have, um, currently, uh, doesn't match the other deals but you want to work with them and backing up for the person listening you had met with Mr. Rapino back when you were doing your first round of investing and there wasn't a cl- who did you meet with at Live Nations then um no one at that point ah, no okay. they were just an expander oh okay yeah okay, but amazing. then a business advisor had actually introduced us yeah so okay. I hadn't met him but we'd emailed and for anybody who doesn't know Mel does tea ceremonies so that's what she means by her tea room she does really beautiful tea ceremonies yeah and it's um it's basically where I can center and clear myself to be able to have a clear dialogue with the universe Mm -hmm. is how I'm coming to learn about what that uh meditation and ceremony means to me each day and I am constantly in dialogue with the universe so that tea ceremony gives me the space to be able to 
have that type of dialogue. So the dialogue that came in was you need to um, say that you think that they're the best partner, but this offer is not, got, it's not going to happen at this offer. And um, fast forward and we got an offer that matched where I thought um, was where we needed to be to help us move into the next stage of our technology. But it wasn't an easy path even then. It was still, it still wasn't easy sailing. Um, after I sent that email, uh, he was very gracious to give me his time and a response. One of the most gracious men in business that I've had the pleasure of knowing thus far. And during an, another down period, when I didn't know if the offer was going to come back to where I wanted it to be, this woman that I had met on a trip that I had won to go to France. What? Yeah. A when couple did you, when uh, this? Wait, is this a manifestation? No, the trip wasn't a manifestation. It was okay. just something fun. Oh, great. <laughs> Fantastic. But it happened about two years ago. I won this trip to France. Went with my best friend and it was part of Soho House. So two Soho House members from every North American Soho House went on this trip to France and it was so cool. So we met a bunch of people from all different cities and two of the members were from Canada. And so she reached out to me on social media, you know, 12 months plus after saying, hey, my husband and I are going to be in Malibu tomorrow if you're around to catch up for a coffee. And I was like, actually, yeah, I've got a bunch of meetings there. Uh, I'll see you then. So we met up and we sat down with her husband. And I was like, oh, what are you guys doing here? And she's like, oh, my husband just got a new job. So he's out in LA meeting the headquarters, which is based in Los Angeles. And I was like, oh, congratulations. What's your new job? And he said, I'm the CFO of Ticketmaster in Canada. Stop it. That to me was the biggest sign from the universe. I mean, come on. The biggest sign because Ticketmaster Live Nation, they own Universe. Yeah. The tic ticketing company that we did the deal with. So he was the CFO of Ticketmaster. During one of my down points when I didn't know if this deal was happening, what are the chances of – meeting this guy. Oh, and Universe is a Canadian-based company. It started in Canada. So he oversees all of their finances. Wow. Yeah. It was a huge, huge message of you're on the right path. And it was from that point that the deal happened, but it wasn't all smooth sailing. It wasn't all smooth sailing at all. But and so did they end up meeting a price point that felt like a good middle ground for the deal? They ended up meeting, yeah, oh, exactly. Good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So energetically, you were just like expanding and stepping into your worth at the same time a little bit. Right. Okay. So I love that piece of the story of meeting Ian because that just came so out of left Tacos. field. I was, yeah. It's <laughs> amazing. I was like how the world works that I won a trip in France and met your wife and now I'm sitting here with you so you could help me come to terms that I'm still on the right path. It, I feel like you're very divine in a lot of your happenings. Right. I mean, we just had a whole conversation about that before the podcast. This is, that's far more divine than anything we'll talk about today where you're headed. But when did you know that you were fully expanded? When did you have that aha moment? And I know we're moving closer to receiving funding for the company. When you went, oh, I can absolutely have this. Uh, that phone call with Zach about the tacos. I see. <laughs> that was it. All right. Because also I feel like that was a message. My friend calling me for the tacos number, but then coming into this full realization of, oh, my gosh. Zach did it. Wow. I can do it too. Tell us about any magic darks you might have had. Uh, or before there, 
We've heard about some of the pings. Yes. What if what were some others if there were any? Because those were pretty divine pings. And yeah. how do you receive your pings outside of tea ceremonies? Just being constantly aware of something that I've started to practice is that whenever I'm in dialogue with someone, they are the universe talking to me. <gasps> There's our quote for the episode. <laughs> That's a good one. And it makes me very present. And even if they're sharing about something that's happening in their life, it is a message for me. Wow. Talk about divinity. Yeah. That's... And getting tapped in at all points of the day of presence. Yeah. That's have been you... really helpful. I have questions on this one because I'm <laughs> like, what a practice. <laughs> have you noticed that you're only now receiving conversations that are far more, I don't want to say important much more poignant than yeah. maybe the small talk you would have had before making the commitment to that practice? I would say that all small talk has now been eliminated. Wow. Because I don't have the small talk in my head or if it is creeping in, it's very quickly snapped out of it. And I know that I'm going to share a bit about my manifestation of a house journey at the moment and how I snapped out of a recent low there. But yeah, it's the small talks becoming more dim. Amazing. Yeah. And okay, so ping, there we go. We've covered that. Tell us about points of which you were tested and had to step into your worth. I, we got a little bit of the picture, but even personal or physical items in your life, just Maybe things connected because love and money is always connected. Does anything else ring a bell there that might have come in? <laughs> I was like, hang on. The whole first part of the story. I remember saying on the last episode for any listener, I was like, once love gets to a very worthy place, this investment's going to come through. Well, you were totally right because ha what actually happened and maybe there was definitely something happening astrologically at this time but it was the evening before the Malibu fires oh wow so the fires had just started and that was the night that this guy that I was seeing broke up essentially broke up with me and it was one of the most beautiful breakups that I have ever had it was I've completely received and let go of it and and took in everything that he shared with me with why it couldn't happen at this point in time or probably I would say ever uh, so that night happened the fires came and we were evacuated from our home for two weeks and that day was when I was introduced to Michael Rapino. <laughs> See, so love got very clear because in the past your patterning, and I don't know if we shared this, but your patterning had been like to sort of be the friend if it turned into something more. And yeah. I knew that once <laughs> this got clear, this was all going to start to happen. It was like, happen. it got clear. It got very clear. The fire came and then oh. the right financial partnership conversations started literally the morning after. Oh my God. It's how it worked. I just want listeners to think about it because we take that for granted and yes. it's a really big deal. And also just metaphorically, and I know we don't get like super spiritual all the time on this, but what are fires? They're literally a burning of the old. It's a cleanse. It's yeah. a cleanse of, I mean, and that's, you know, for anybody, I'm so sorry who might've lost their houses, but just metaphorically speaking, it's a bit, really big deal. So that's huge. Yeah, it was huge. And I mean, yeah, it's, your work that you share with all of us, it's literally, it happened in real life and in very quick timing for me that it was so clear that I was like, well, there's Lacey's formula. <laughs> happened in 24 hours. <laughs> well, did any other test come? <laughs> like personal? So I think those three offers that I had for the ticketing tech partnership at the end of last year were my tests because they were all great. I could have accepted any one of them before the end of the year, which is what my goal in my head was, 
you know, but I really did step into my personal self-worth and the company's self-worth of, no, none of these are actually good enough. So I'm quickly interrupting this episode to invite you if you're ready to start your manifestation journey or if anything you've heard in our manifestation episodes has piqued your interest to begin. We have a la carte workshops in everything from the basics bundle, which is what we recommend to everyone who starts. It's the formula that actually teaches you how to manifest, unblocked inner child and unblocked shadow. We also have a la carte workshops on love and money. But the real gem is the Pathway membership because it encompasses every single workshop we have. It's a year-long membership with full access to the few a la carte offerings we have and exclusive workshops not available anywhere else, such as the daily practice, which is what everybody in the Pathway uses, hopefully at least three times a week to daily in order to truly create the new neural pathways that one needs in order to manifest and houses the library of our deep imaginings, which is our unique hypnosis process that allows you to get into your subconscious and overwrite those old neural pathways, creating the new ones. You can use our special code EXPANDED, all caps, E-X-P-A-N-D-E-D, to receive $20 off your first a la carte workshop purchase or $20 off your first month of the pathway. Again, that's all caps, EXPANDED, E-X-P-A-N-D-E-D. Okay, now back to the episode. already experienced your magic dark is what you actually happened to be in at the last episode I believe you were in that and you had just a little bit more energetic things to get clear on and then tell us what it felt like or what it looked like when you actually received the investment not like the call that it was happening or what did that all look like and was that flowy actually I would say after the ticketing partnership deal happened the further investment from Live Nation was very flowy. Mm -hmm. And I kind of just surrendered and let go of any sort of process around investment deals and how typical investment structures happen. And it happened very quickly. Amazing. Because if the ticketing deal happened in March and we're now in the end of July, We secured our further investment in May. So that's the quickest investment that I've ever heard of if, you know, if it was going through a, uh, you know, typical route of investment. And the biggest ping I'm receiving, and I've been getting at this whole episode, is you highlighting, you're starting to get a taste of your patterning with manifestation now, right? Like you were out seeking investment May of the prior year. Mm-hmm. It landed May, like literally physically landed May of the following year. And then also it seems like there were other little forms of patterning going on there. Have you started to connect those dots of what that seems to look like for you, your manifestation process, or even to refine it even deeper? Has it made you reflect on prior manifestations to go like, I seem to always go through a magic dark, not just based on like Lacey's formula, but you're going through it with housing right now. It's the exact, exact same process. (laughs) Yes. Tell us what you've discovered, the insights, or maybe are discovering in this conversation right now. Definitely becoming super aware of my patterns. And this is something that I look for all the time is to see through, I call it, I want to see through my patterns faster which is happening now. And I think that's a personal process of claiming where your patterns are, I think. Mm-hmm. Is, is, does that make sense? Absolutely. And just claiming it and going, oh, yeah, I used to do that. And it is difficult, but going about things in a different way once you're in that awareness instead of falling back into the comfortable way. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. Lila and I just discovered 
before this that you're a non-specific manifester and what that looks like in human design, which we all, at, whoever listened to the earlier episode knows that you're a reflector. Are you an emotional reflector? Mm. I don't remember what you are, That's but a, a reflector enough is just like, <laughs> <laughs> that's just rare enough as it is. <laughs> so as a non-specific, you still call in key things that you want to my understanding, but you give, you leave room for the universe. So whereas I, as a specific would be like, it's in Topanga, it's this type of floors, this type of wall, blah, blah, blah. Whereas uh -huh. you would be like, it's in nature somewhere, you know, it's a little bit more ambiguous. Right. If you reflect back on your list versus how this investment showed up, can you see the clarity of being a non-specific of how you would craft your next list? Absolutely, because even though it ended up happening, I think, yeah, for me, I would need to leave out a bit, absolutely need to be less specific. So can you give us an example without numbers and stuff, because that's private, what you called in versus what actually how it showed up? Yes. Just highlighting for the non-specific. Yeah, so I there. had like the X amount of dollars that I needed for the company. And that's exactly what showed up. Mm -hmm. Which is amazing as a non-specific. Right. And then, but it didn't show up in the ways that I wrote. And so the ways that I wrote was like this type of partner and by this date. Which and is for all manifestors, don't give dates. Because <laughs> you'll just be by disappointed. This time, by this time and... But then it ended up happening in a series of two deals from two separate companies owned by the same parent company. Amazing. You, Amazing. Can't, even, you can't even write that. You stuff. can't even, yeah, you wouldn't even imagine. <laughs> I mean, it's totally, yeah. Yeah, so I would be way less specific. And look at the magic of how that worked out. I mean, it's just magical of like working and partnering with this company and then getting an investment from their parent. It's just incredible. Yeah. Can so you grateful for it. Tell us where you're out at in your house process now and just whatever you want to share, because I feel you're very similar in your house process to where we spoke last time about this process. Okay, good. So I'm going to say it on the podcast because obviously things come true. It's like a magic genie bottle. <laughs> <laughs> We'll be having a third one, <laughs> May of next year. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, we're already halfway there. You know, it'll be like three months from now, basically. So I am manifesting a house to buy. Just said it out loud. Mm -hmm. And it has to be in the mountains and have mountain and ocean views. Amazing. And I think that's all I need to say because... I've just learned that I can't be too specific, but I literally don't have a place to live as of next week. Amazing. And I have been bouncing from place to place, but very gratefully, you know, with friends or sublets or traveling for work. So I've been ultra lucky to have that situation, uh, but it has been four months now and I am feeling very ungrounded. What would the old you, where you were last year when we recorded, in that space of like, I don't know if I'm even going to renew my visa. <laughs> no. I want to see how I would frame this, but who's now realized this investment, the company is going to the next level everything that version of you has learned, what would she say to the you who's about to be homeless next week in this house manifestation process? Just take care of yourself and go get a massage. Because <laughs> it's all going to be fine. Lila's was, <laughs> dude, chill. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty much dude, chill, get a massage, have a glass of wine you're so lucky to be where you're at yeah. and we're just everything is ordering out in the way that it should be and we just need a little bit more time amazing so just take a break incredible <laughs> what have been your other now that you're a year older you've actually been doing this process for longer in in whatever way shape or form what are the biggest things you've learned through this about yourself i love the fact that you 
are now, every time you interact with a person in conversation, seeing it as direct communication from the universe, what have been some other practices you personally have picked up or you've downloaded through your spiritual practice that might help other people? I think the biggest is realizing that we are constantly in dialogue with the universe, whether it's through people or messages that you see on social media um, or the shop that you end up at is called something that, you know, is, I mean, it's the thing about signs, but I have tried to become less attached to the, to that languaging of signs and just being more open to that. It's a dialogue and that it's an exchange and that nothing is really permanent and it's always in motion and that things can shift and the other biggest thing for me is in that shift is just to surrender because you you never know exactly how it's going to turn out, but it's always going to turn out in the right way for you. During the manifestation process of the investment, what was your biggest rock bottom? Having to let people go, stuff. Yeah. And what did, like for you, what did you take away from that? Or how did you upgrade during that experience? How did I upgrade during that? Uh, actually, it. I think this is what you're asking, but what that taught me was how to very diplomatically and graciously, realistically tell people where you're at. Mm, vulnerability. Yeah. And, you know, sharing that with certain contractors and team members at that time and everyone that I had to let go of at that time really graciously received it. Amazing. So I think that was a huge upgrade. <laughs> totally. Because, you know, in this evolution of the company and just in through personal relationships there's got to be a graceful and tactful way of showing up in whether it's something positive or negative how did it put you more in your worth and what I mean by that energetically how are you able now to hold a greater container of things you want that are bigger in the future well actually I think that I have been, I'm in that test at the moment and it has been like a, almost the universe is asking me is if I'm ready for this next step because in the last three months I got, or four months really, I was shifted out of my home. I didn't have a grounded place to live in. So that's huge for um, a Taurus. A Taurus. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, got this huge investment for the company, had to grow the company and expand the team all without having that home and the grounding. Meanwhile, something other really major came into the work experience that was majorly taking up headspace and time. And then also, we had this huge project going up in, in Big Sur with Mercado Sagrado. So I feel like that combination of things is really testing me. Like, is Mel going to lose her shit? A thousand percent. <laughs> She's got no bed that is her own to go cry into. Yeah, like, just her car right just now. Just her car. <laughs> <laughs> you know. We're throwing this at her and, you know, not throwing it at her, but like... You're honestly this... using the perfect languaging because like even when we created up level, which is within the pathway, rock bottom, that's a hundred. Next level, truthfully, is where you're at right now. That's exactly what you're being tested on. Can you fucking hold this yeah. bigger nervous system space, like I, this bigger aura? I really feel it. I mean, it's... And some points where I feel like I am at my rock bottom, like I'll, you know... I'll either be, usually it's in my car, funnily, and I'll be driving up the mountain. I'll be like, come on, what else yes. have you got for me? Like, you know, <laughs> on the vert, like pretty much crying or crying, just going, what else do you want to give to me today? Because I'm still here. Yeah. And I'm not <laughs> going anywhere, even yeah. though I could have a nervous breakdown tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very much in that, yeah, right now. And, and I do feel like, it's not one specific test for a specific manifestation. It's a series of tests to see if I can up-level my entire 
life and if I can handle it because all these little tests happening now, I feel like they're only small in comparison for what I want to grow and where I want to be that, you know, these are going to be a drop of water in, in a you're whole in, ocean. Like you're so, you're reading it so perfectly. That's exactly what's happening. Do you have the pathway? Yes. You have to do yeah, I've done next it. level. I've done it. Okay, That's good. why I know. Okay, good. I'm like, you got to keep doing that right now. This is where you're at. Like it's all coming. Actually, one other rock bottom that I'll share during that very little money in the company period was I was driving back from an art exhibition in West Hollywood back to Topanga. I still have my house. And so it was at the beginning of this year. And all of a sudden, this woman, on, we were on Fairfax. This woman pulls up next to me and she's like waving, but nice waving. And I'm like, <laughs> not crazy, not crazy waving, waving yeah. just waving. And I'm like, oh, do I know that woman? Like, no. Um, so I just wave back and like I keep driving. And then there was a bunch of traffic on Fairfax. And so I'd stop the car. And next thing I know, this woman had pulled up next to me and she's like waving she's like wind down your window wind down your window and I'm like oh what's going on here and it was this woman with daughter in the passenger seat and I wound down my window and she's like are you okay are you okay you totally hit me and I was like me no I didn't and funnily enough my phone had run out of battery and I didn't have a charger in my car and I wasn't listening to any music. I was very focused. So I knew that I didn't hit anyone. And, you know, wasn't, there was traffic. So it wasn't like I was yeah, zooming like, past. Like yeah. yeah. And I, was, I like literally looked at her and I was like, what, me? No, it must have been another car. And she was like, no, no, no. Are you okay? You totally hit me. And I was like, no, I didn't. And then the traffic started to move. So I kept driving. Next thing I know, she is like right behind me, flashing her lights, honking her horn. She's like, head out the window, pull over, pull over, you hit me like this. And I'm like, okay. It very quickly went through my head. I was like, I could speed away from this woman right now because I know I didn't hit her or I should pull over. And so I'm driving and I'm like assessing my safety. Like oh, it yeah. was like pretty late at night. There were other cars around and so... I decided to pull over. Anyway, as soon as I pull over, the young teenage daughter comes out of the car and she like grabs me and she's like, are you okay? And like, I was like, yeah, I don't know what you guys are talking about. I, nothing happened. And by this point, the mom is standing at my car and she's like, yeah, look, like there's a scratch on your car. And I was like, oh my God. Well, and it was dark and I'm like, well, yeah, I ne I've never had that scratch on my car before. Like, what's going on here? What happened? And it all happened very quickly. And they were basically grifting me. What's that even mean? That's like stealing from you. Yeah. <gasps> Saying that I did something. And what, what happened was what I now know happened is the teenage daughter distracted me when we came out of the car while the mom put the scratch on the car and called me over and anyway she said look how much do you have insurance and I was like of course I have insurance and she had this bump on her car and she was like well my husband's going to be so annoyed with me let's just sort this out now and she's like and we don't have to go through our insurance companies and I was like well but I think you know we should go through our insurance company she's like your always yeah she was like your deductible is going to be way more than what this would cost and anyway they just got me in such a vulnerable position oh beyond I wouldn't even know what to do in this yeah spot. it was like 10 p.m at night we're we're pretty much on the highway entrance so there's <gasps> cars zooming by and then the daughter was like well we could just go, there's an ATM. We could just go to the ATM off the next exit. And I'm thinking, I'm not following you guys to an ATM because who knows oh, like beyond. who's on the other side of that yeah. ATM. And I was like, if anything, you're following me to an ATM. I'm going to choose it and I'm going to get the money out for you. 
So that's what we did because I just, <gasps> at this point, I was just so freaked out. My, fo my phone was dead. Oh my I had no gosh. one to call. I couldn't take photos. So I felt like this was a rock bottom and the universe showing me, you know, lots of things. But we went to an ATM inside of a supermarket where I felt safe and I got out, I think it was $300 oh. cash and I literally was crying as I gave it over to her. <gasps> um, and she knew that, she knew that I knew I was being grifted. Oh my God. And she was like, come on, give me a hug. And I was just like, fuck you, but <gasps> you know, it, that to me. And so this all happened before the money came through. And I think it was a huge lesson for me just around being way more aware of people who are going to want to come in and yes <laughs> I mean that's how I'm going to be dealing with way loads more amount of cash than what and lawsuits I and have things, now yes. and things all like that all yes. the things so it's like okay at that point first of all should have had a charger in my car but just call the cops. They Always. wouldn't have stayed around. Oh, they would definitely wouldn't have. And it's such a great story for other people to hear. I mean, I wouldn't even know what to do in that situation. Yeah. What I will say to anybody listening, and this is absolutely, absolutely true, is you can, and I know this, you can never lose something that's rightfully yours. Right. And it really does come back more. So it's like that 300 is going to, obviously it did show up as so much more in your life. You, yeah. you received more, but for the person who's allowing that kind of a thing to ruin, I mean, it shakes your sense of security. I mean, there's so many things I was there. shook. Oh, beyond. Yeah. I wouldn't. I had one time, I was, and I was at a really low, low self-worth point in my life. And I was, I was so broke. I was waitressing at the time. And that specific time, I was like, let go for a week from my job. So I wasn't making any money that week. And I was driving from my hometown back to LA, stopped in Bakersfield for gas. There was a what do you call it? Like a station wagon with a family and the kid. And he said, we ran out of gas. We don't have any money. Is, can you spare anything? And even at that point, I was like, of course, here's $10. And I had already put the pump into my car, like my old Toyota Yaris, put it in to fill it up and went inside to pee. And when I got back into my car, I began to drive and I had filled it up and no, no gas. <gasps> and so not only did he take my $10, yeah. they also filled up their gas can. And I literally cried the whole way home being like, who would do this to me in one of my lowest moments? But I mean, at the end of the day, all of that came back to me in like a gazillion fold. And, and again, we're just really, really being tested. I mean, yeah. I had a crazy rock bottom last year testing this exact thing. It's like, you're becoming a lot more seen. Mm. You're becoming, you know, more of a presence. Can you handle what that brings, mm. you know? And after a, a good seizure and losing 17 pounds in three days and my entire sanity and the team's sanity, I went, yeah, I fucking can. Mm. Let's go. Yeah, like, let's, let's do see. this. Let's do this. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm th thank you for sharing that story. Yeah. And I just think like on a norm core <laughs> level... <laughs> <laughs> a non-manifestation level. People should hear that story. There's grifters, there's actual grifters out there doing yeah. that. And when I've told the story to friends, they've got similar stories. I'm like, we need to tell people about this. Absolutely. But, you know, of course, if it's going to happen to you, there's other lessons that you can take from it. And for me, it was just having that awareness of just being a lot smarter. Yeah. <laughs> In Because I knew. I knew at every single moment that I'd never hit the car. Totally. And, you know, I don't know why my phone was dead, but, yeah, I just. I know. And it was so funny. Even Lila and I were having this conversation because I think a lot of people have probably been receiving those phone calls where it's like the IRS has stopped your social security and even things like that people fall for. Yeah. I had my dad's girlfriend. I mean, <laughs> She stayed on the phone with one of those people for like oh 30 minutes gosh. giving all of her information. Oh, and my no. dad was like, what? <laughs> oh, <laughs> so yeah. people need to hear these stories. It's yeah. happening. It's and happening. Don't fall. I mean, like call the cops. Don't yeah. fall for it. Don't answer. Don't respond. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. No problems. Yeah, you're welcome. That was a good part of the rock bottom. I know. It's a real learning experience now <laughs> to look back like on. $300 to me was a lot of that Totally. Could have had, you know. At the yeah. lowest. But those are the ways we will be tested in right. different 
forms of like, can you handle, can you handle this? And you could, and now it's only going to get better and greater and all the things. But for you, what do we have to look forward to in Conscious City Guide right now? I mean, you guys just put on all together, you guys help produce a spectacular event. And I, I could only see it at Instagram, but a spectacular Mercado Sangrado up in Big Sur. What do, what do we have to look forward to? Yeah, well, Big Sur is still open. It's so a month longer. Is it continuing? It's um, continuing right now until the end of September. So the marketplace there is all Mercado Sagrado curated. So if you're driving up to Northern California this summer, definitely stop it in because there's beautiful vendors there. But we just had our first big team Conscious City Guide team alignment day last week with seven new full-time staff. Wow. Which is super exciting. What are some of those roles that have been filled now? So we have director of partnerships, our director of experiences, our community manager, and our community outreach manager. And then there's Kiki and I, the co-founders, and then um, we have our community director who really looks after all our experience creators who are uploading and wanting to promote their events through Conscious City Guide. And anybody who doesn't know, Conscious City Guide is producing the whole speaking tour through To Be Magnetic, which you guys have to look forward to starting as early as uh, November. November. Yeah. I didn't know if that had been announced yet. No, so I didn't we're say. starting the promotion now, you guys. So <laughs> just in this sense, get ready because we're going to be announcing it soon. So yeah, so we're super excited to be able to do more tours like that and um, so overjoyed that it's with you and can't wait to to bring your whole experience to different cities in real life Um, because I feel so many people engage well I know so many people engage with you online and through the podcast so having that in real life experience is just unmatchable I mean I was just doing a speaking event at uh, in San Francisco last week with almost 30 it was so it's so necessary you know it was so beautiful to meet the community and be able to chat with you after and you know, answer some questions and have that interaction that I cannot wait for this. Yeah. And so as a little sneak preview, we'll be doing two in the West Coast, two East Coast. Well, we just decided one New York, one Chicago. So we can hit the Midwest for you guys. And then we'll be doing some international in Europe. So get ready. We're going to announce that. And we're really excited. So excited. So um, we have plenty more things um, and tours like that to look forward to. Um, Mercado Sagrado's main fair in November in Malibu Canyon and international expansion of events on the platform. Amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. And where can we find you? ConsciousCityGuide.com. And you can find me personally nowhere because I'm still calling in that house. (laughs) We can see you floating around the canyon (laughs) in your electric car (laughs) with Pippet, who's a real trooper. Her dog is a real trooper on this experience. Yeah, she's been four months without a home too, but she's very lucky. Very lucky. Well, thank you, Mel, for sharing your process. And we're really excited to see when you get the home. We're going to have you back. (laughs) Uh, Thanks for having me. Bye, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for tuning into the episode, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, we did. And in case you're not totally ready to join the pathway yet, I wanted to share a few of our free offerings that I'll often suggest to people as a little bit of a blueprint to get them started on their manifestation journey. The first place I like to direct people completely for free is the motivation. You can see it linked below or on our homepage as our testimony library. And it's categorized by different subjects, whether you're calling in career, money, love, wellness, and much more. When you're reading about a member's experience of what they manifested, you're actually seeing to believe and showing your subconscious that that very thing is possible for you. The second place I like to direct people is to the free clarity exercise, which is also linked below. 
in it, you get to try our own unique hypnosis process, learn about the science and some journaling prompts. And the best part about this, you'll get a tiny taste of what it's like to go into your hypnotic state, bring your subconscious forward and create new neural pathways while receiving clarity. And the third thing, if you haven't listened to it on this podcast yet, please go back to the episode titled Manifestation 101, where you'll learn the basics of neural manifestation to truly understand this process. So go ahead and check out those free resources, the motivation, the free clarity exercise, and the episode Manifestation 101, all linked below. And in an effort to make sure to have representation in this process series, go ahead and submit any process testimonials you have, especially to our LGBTQ plus community, our BIPOC, as well as the Ys, which is anyone in the community who is 45 and over. All right, we'll be back next week.